Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are starting a new video series today on matrices. In this particular video, we are aiming at Year 11 General Maths students across Australia, as well as students in Specialist Maths in Queensland and Western Australia. In this video, you will find out some new vocabulary. So this is a very basic beginner's introduction video. We're going to look at some different types of matrices and talk about applications of matrices with networks. And then we're going to have a little look at what we're going to be doing in some of our future videos. So get your pens handy, get ready to write down some of that new vocabulary. So firstly, what is a matrix? Well, it's a rectangular arrangement, arrangement of numbers and information in columns and rows. So it's a way of storing information and it's used in a variety of different contexts. Some of those contexts in real life include engineering, science, project management, statistics and computing, just to name a few. And this is an example of what a matrix looks like. You will notice firstly that we use square brackets on the left and the right hand side. That's the convention for showing that this is a matrix. Secondly, we've got information that is stored in rows and information that is stored in columns. Now, some people, the word row and the word, the word column is quite intuitive. You know what it means. But for other people who English may be their second language, they're not familiar with the difference between a row and a column. So typically, you will be seated in rows at a cinema or a theater or a sporting event or even at a school assembly. And a column is a vertical structure usually used to hold up buildings. So that's the difference between a row and a column. Rows are horizontal, columns are vertical. Now it's important to know the difference because we name our matrices in certain ways. Firstly, let's talk a little bit about parts of a matrix. So we've got something called an element. Now every number or entry inside a matrix is called an element and we've got certain ways of naming those. They're named in accordance with their position inside the matrix. So any particular element has a different name. The way we read it firstly is we look at what row the element is in and then what column it is in. So the top row in a matrix is called row number one. The next row underneath is row two, three, and so on. The very first column on the left in a matrix is column number one and then two, three, four, and so on. So that's why it's important to know the difference between a row and a column. Now here is an example of a matrix and it's got three rows and three columns. Now I would denote a particular item within that, the element little e with a subscript two, three means the second row and the third column. So that's element 23. Another example would be element 11. It's the first row and the first column. Another example, element 13 or 1, 3. It's the first row, third column. And element 22 or 2, 2 is the second row, second column and so on. Now we describe matrices in a certain way. It's called the order of the matrix and it's described by how many rows it has and how many columns it has. And once again, we identify the number of rows first and then the number of columns. So the example below is a matrix that's a three by three matrix. There's three rows, three columns. This one's a three by two, three rows, two columns. And this one's a two by three, two rows, three columns. So you can see some different kinds. Now I'm going to talk to you about some different kinds of matrices. There's some special matrices that have some special features. The first one is a row matrix. It's quite simply a one row matrix. Now it could have 50 different elements in that row, but it's a single uh, horizontal row. And that follows that a column matrix is a single column matrix. So once again, it could have 100, it could have two different um, elements in the column, but it's a single column. We've also got something special called an identity matrix, and we're going to look more at these in our future videos. It's a square matrix, and that means all of the elements on the leading diagonal, which is your top left element, all the way down to the bottom right element, are all number ones, and every other element in the matrix is a zero. And this is an example of one here. That's the leading diagonal that's been circled there where they're all ones. We've got that one called a zero matrix, and it's a square matrix where every element in the matrix is a zero. Now you've just heard me refer to two different matrices, an identity matrix and a zero matrix as square matrices. That's another type of matrix. It's a matrix where the number of rows is equal to the number of columns. 
Matrices can be used to describe different situations in real life, such as a network. Now, we can represent different types of connections within that network. Now, when I say network, we could be looking at, for example, a road network, roads between towns or railways between towns. We could be looking at electrical cables between certain points in a computer network. We could be looking at pipes within a pipeline and so on. There's lots of different applications where we can represent the information and how many connections there are between two places inside a matrix. In this particular example below, we're looking at the number of road networks between three towns, A, B and C. You'll notice I've used um, some words um, around this particular matrix. Typically on the left hand side is your from connection and typically across the top is your to connection. But you don't have to label it, but it's a good idea to communicate that with a word here and there, just because if you've decided to do it in reverse, to to from on the top, it can be a little bit hard for people to, to read and decide if you've done it the right way. So I would always say use a word from and then to just to show what you're doing. Also, you'll notice that I've put the town's names in a column along the left and in a row along the top, and that helps me to identify my connections. So what we're basically saying here is that between towns A and B, there are two connections and that will match the from and the to because it's the same two roads, for example. If we're looking at the connections between um, town A and C, well then from C to A, there's five roads and it's the same five roads going from A to C. And then from C to B, it's one road which is the same as going from B to C. So it's in the same road in reverse. So you can see that the number gets repeated depending on its position inside the matrix. We could also represent this with a network diagram. And this is really going to apply if you're in grade 12, you're going to be looking at networks and returning back to matrices again. You can see down here, if I had to draw these three towns, I've got two road networks between A and B, and I've got one road between B and C, and we've got those five roads between A and C, and that matches the information inside our matrix. Now you'll notice between A and A, and B and B, and C and C, it's a zero. And that's because there's no road looping around, going nowhere else, just it's basically, that town is only connected to other towns, not within itself. Let's do a worked example now where we're going to take some information and we're going to turn that into a matrix. So we need to actually take this map of Australia and we're going to represent how many borders and territories there are, sorry, how many borders there are between all of the different states and territories. So firstly, we should count how many states and territories there are. There's eight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a square matrix with eight rows and eight columns. It's an eight by eight matrix. And we're going to put some headings on that too. And you'll notice that the same headings appear across the top as do across the left hand side and they're in the exact same order as well. So now we're looking at the relationship between Victoria, if I'm going down the columns, Victoria and every other state. Well, obviously, Victoria has no borders with itself, so that would be a zero. Between Victoria and ACT, well, ACT lives solely in, the New, in New South Wales, so therefore there are no borders between the ACT and Victoria. There's no borders with Western Australia, no borders with TAS, no borders with the Northern Territory, no borders with Queensland, but there is a border with South Australia and there is a border with New South Wales. So the only numbers in this particular column are going to be zeros and ones. And so what we're going to do is repeat that process right across our matrix. So then we go with the Australian Capital Territory and we're going to find that it's all zeros and ones as well. Same with Western Australia, Tasmania, Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia and New South Wales. So you may want to pause the video here and just confirm that I've got all my borders in the right places. You could use this matrix, for example, by adding up the columns, you could work out which particular state has the most borders. I can see that Victoria has two borders going down vertically. Um, ACT has one, Western Australia has two, Tasmania has no borders with any other state, Northern Territory has three, Queensland has three, South Australia has one, two, three, four, five different borders. So South Australia is our most bordered state and New South Wales has three. 
Okay, let's have a quick look at what's coming up. I bet you thought that was a lot easier than you thought it was going to be, which is fantastic. Next video, we're going to look at some operations with matrices followed by matrix multiplication, some applications of matrices, and then we're going to move into some specialist matrices for our specialist students. And I'd like to welcome some of our new subscribers. We are almost up to a thousand subscribers as I speak here in 2021. Welcome Peter and Jenny. And please follow us on Facebook. McClatchy Mass is the one to look up and you'll find out when every video is ready for you to watch as well as some tips and tricks and some information. And I'd like to say a big thank you again to everybody who has subscribed, people who contact me, people who comment and who like the channel. And you can always reach us at mcclatchymass at yahoo.com if you've got any particular questions. Well, that's all we have time for today. It was relatively painless, painless and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Natalie McClatchy and you've been watching McClatchy Mass. Have a great day.